I don't care about you. <laughs> Mr. Mayor, are you ready? Yes, I am, sir. Okay, we, uh, Boys. we recently completed a, an executive session, so we'll hop into the open session. Actually, before we start the meeting tonight, I'd like to ask that we observe a moment of silence to uh, honor and remember those who tragically lost their lives 16 years ago. Thank you. Okay. First order, first item on our agenda is public input, and I'm pretty certain that there isn't anybody from the public to be here tonight. Although I do want to welcome our brand new reporter, Maureen Darty, to the stage tonight. I already miss Dan, though. I really do. <laughs> I, I see back. Your work will be graded against Dan's. I don't want to put any pressure congratulations. on you. Congratulations. Congratulations, yes. Maureen. Yes. I want to congratulate you on uh, becoming editor of the transcript. Looking forward to reading the paper every week. It's great news. Someone who is embedded in our community and who knows it like the back of her hand. So welcome back. Next is student report. We will have our first student report on our, at our next meeting, Mr. Bernard. That's correct, on the 25th. I okay. Believe it, I believe it's Gerald and Kaya Tamatam is up. Okay. And uh, next item is uh, continued business, the MSBA SSBC update. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. So a few things I would like to highlight for you, um, some of which may be a little bit redundant, but I want to keep them kind of on the front burner and also in the, in the uh, public eye, so to speak, is that there is still some um, remaining areas, still are, are still some uh, remaining areas to be hydro seeded, um, particularly um, as the uh, bridge comes from the Main Street corridor over to the high school, there was a sloped area that just had a very difficult time with grass germinating. Um, and so Gilbane has, um, has agreed to um, rehydro seed the area uh, sometime this month. We're hoping to capture the fall uh, growing season. So that still is scheduled to take place. The landscape consultant, uh, those of you that have been intimately involved with the project know of Bill Brown. He was on site uh, the week of September 4th, and he identified the need for um, three tree replacements. And there are approximately 23 other plant items that um, have been identified as needing to be replaced with. They're mostly low-growing shrubs in kind of the pavilion areas, either at the main entrance or by the gymnasium entrance. But when we last met to review the punch list um, about two or three weeks ago, um, there was a, a consideration that maybe those plants might not need to be necessarily replaced because the ones that are doing well have kind of grown together and they're really, I think they're, they're taking nice shape and they're kind of filling the spots where others might need to go. So essentially what has been asked is for those um, remaining, I think it's just under 30 items, both the, the three trees and then the remaining 26 or so low growth plants to be monetized for consideration by the SSP, uh, SSBC to see whether or not we would be um, more amenable to um, accepting the cost and, and kind of putting that right. back to the project as opposed to going forward with the tree replacements and the shrub replacements. So that's something that's anticipated for the next SSBC meeting on September 19th. The third bullet in my, um, in my report to you actually changed over the weekend. There was, uh, from the last punch list review um, meeting, there was a meeting set for this coming Wednesday, September the 13th, but um, some of the principal parties namely those from PMA and Gilbane are not able to attend. So that meeting has been changed um, at the request of the chairman of the SSBC. It looks like we'll be meeting at four o'clock on uh, the 19th instead. Um, that would be right prior to the, the full SSBC meeting. So quite honestly, I think we, we uh, some of us that were at the last meeting were a little disappointed to hear that we would not be meeting on the 13th. I think it might have put us in a better position and I know Mr. Webster, Mr. Vanessa, you heard about this today at the finance planning team meeting, but I think we were hoping to have a little bit more advanced time to consider the position on some of those outstanding uh, punch list items, of which there are not many, and, and, I, and there are a number that have been resolved since the last meeting, mostly in the zone of kind of the warranty items and paperwork being received. Some have a deadline of actually September 12th tomorrow, but um, be that as it may, it looks like September 19th is going to be kind of the more... Um, you know, the, the day when we're going to have more of an update. And, and just to add, the of the <clears throat> remaining actual construction punch list items, I believe the one main one is the drainage area outside your there, there, um, the central administration and the, also some issues with some of the catch basins and 
manhole covers that have to be looked at by our public works department, correct? Correct. There are, there are really three that involve any kind of what I would say labor. The others tend to be more paperwork, receipt right. of documents and such, but you're right. There's, um, there continues to be puddling outside of the central office around that, that small island with a drain that I think is just too high. And I think, you know, I actually spoke with Joanna Cripp from Gilbane last week about what I, I think I tend to see it the most because it, you know, it's right outside my window and I can tell where it's puddling and, what, and to the, what extent. I think the, I just think the drain is too high. Um, there is a, an inspection for um, a manhole down kind of in the Dodge Road area that um, we're waiting for someone from the Dow company that right. did the uh, repaving to kind of give a third party assessment along with our public works department. You're right on this one manhole that required some sort of a retrofit and the engineer is not willing to sign off on it because they weren't present to see right. it. But we're, I think we're at the at a place where we're at least willing to entertain the idea of a, a third party assessment. And then the third item, again, these that involve any kind of labor is a very small item. It's a, um, what I believe is a need, a need for a replacement of a piece of glass in the oh, cool. serving line in the high school cafeteria. That's right. That I looked at again today and I'm convinced that it's just, it's a flawed piece of glass, it's pitted, so. So the bottom line is there were approximately 30 items on that punch about, list and right. I think about 27 or 26 of them were paperwork Fair items. Votes, right. And, right. Um, you know, we had set a date of August 15th, at which after that, there was an opportunity for us to assess a penalty to, to a Gilbane. Right. Right. That was William right. right. And, and they completed that item. Right. And so there, there's no penalties assessed to Gilbane. For all intents and purposes, the project is done, except for those f few minor construction items and, and all the paperwork. I, I think, yeah, I think, I think we're very, very close, yeah. You're still working with Ockers as well, right? Yes, I am. In fact, they're gonna be in here on Wednesday. Um, when I, I will have- Can I explain a little bit what Ockers? Just sure, so Ockers is the consultant that was hired to um, essentially install, provide and install much of the AV, the audiovisual systems in the, in the building. They've been very good to work with. I will have for the SSBC meeting on the 19th, an updated report on the work that they um, have done to date. It's, all, it's substantial. Um, not a lot of real big items, but they're significant. I think the, the benefits of them are, are significant. The improvements have made a difference. Um, they're coming back in on uh, Wednesday to tie the gymnasium area down to the control room downstairs with a fiber optic line, I'm going to say. Um, They've been in pretty consistently, though. They've been a good presence here. They, they've done they've some, made nice some improvements, work for us. correct? In, in they have. They identified some things that they, they I'll give you a, the best example I can give you of something that I think was a, was a design flaw is to control the systems from the Performing Arts Center. The only place to do that previously was in the control booth, which we all know is a good distance away from the, from the stage. They've installed a Crestron panel on the stage now behind oh, the nice. wall. So you can, That's excellent. you know, it, which, on its very simplest level, there's a place now that you can control the screen coming up and down from that location, which makes total sense. That's excellent. They did that for a very, well, they've done a lot of work at no cost. They've, some things have had a cost. That's one that's had a, I think it's a relatively low, it's about $1,037. Well, the projector thing they did too was excellent. Was it, were they? So they did a cutout of the projector in the control room in the Performing Arts Center. Yeah, that, that was, it's a very expensive piece of equipment and it was just the way it was designed. It was in kind of the, the path walkway. It floor. was very susceptible to being kicked, you know, by no, just by why, because it's an area that tends to be dark too, because it's, you know, performance is in there. So they built a, a, a kind of a rack that slides it in and out for a bulb changing and such to any other maintenance that it might need eventually, but it also is built now, out now into the Performing Arts Center. I think they did a nice finished job with that. Um, you wouldn't even, I, I, don't, I think if I didn't tell you, you probably would never right. notice it. It's one of those deals. But again, it's to preserve the piece of equipment, which is very costly. I think I'm looking at them, there's a, there's a projector that I'm very interested in purchasing the, with the funds that are available to replace the projector in this room. I think you know this is really one of our kind of premier spaces, pre, pre, premier presentation spaces. The, re, the projector that's on now is a replacement of the same one that we believed all along was not right and we finally got someone to say, you're, you're right, it's not right. <laughs> um, so they replaced it, but it's the same model. There's an enhanced model that is so much better um, you can you can project in this room with the lights on, with the window shades up. Um, the quality is much sharper. Yeah, yeah. It's 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 almost like a television screen. So, 
if the funds allow through what's been allotted to do that, that's that's something I'm going to be very interested in doing. They've they've replaced some equipment at no cost. They've made recommendations on other things that they think that we should consider, but they're not. They, the, they're small items that have a, a, a significant benefit, I think, to, uh, to the how performance. About the audio in, in the performing arts center. So that's a good question. You were talking about the new microphones. Yeah, the new microphones and how. So, they, you know, so we're. we're, we're if you noticed last week when I was speaking, I had, you had the microphones we have right now have to kind of be right, right. right in front of you. We, we've purchased um, a set, a number of microphones yeah. that yeah. Are, are, they're, they're just a different style. And you don't need to be right on top of the microphone. You can be at, at a distance, you know, a normal distance away from it. Um, and they'll also be uh, in sync with what um, Norcam needs to have for something like, say, town meeting. You know, right now yeah. we have the two microphones. Right. So that will be eliminated. That's good. Where I'm anticipating, I informed the town, man, town administrator this morning that I'm anticipating that we'll have those for town meeting. So that's what, what things are looking at. But the, um, I, I think what's been done, the trainings that have been provided, I think the quality has been much better and much more consistent. Um, there was a, uh, there's been a lot done. I, I, I would say their report, when I show the SSBC on, on next Tuesday night, I would be willing to bet that it's a three-page report with probably 25 or so items. And correct me if I'm wrong, but this relationship was kind of cultivated by John. Yes. Independent of the Secondary School Building Committee. In other words, you worked with Ockers directly, right, on this thing? I did. Uh, Patrick I mean, Daly, really, and I, we, yeah. we were seeking codes to program the Crest Arm panel. And the only people to get that from were the Auckers folks. And they reached out, they wrote back to us asking for a meeting, that they really felt like their customer service had been compromised and they wanted to try to restore that with us. And I think I'm convinced that it was not through fault of theirs that, that their, um, I guess their reputation was, was something they, they were. They were the contract, the subcontract. Right. They did. They've been, the I would go as so far as to say that they've probably been the best, um, subcontracted to work with in terms of getting them back to help us and they they have gone out of their way I mean then I forget where they are but they're far Is it yeah. or so it's not close by and they have made every effort they sent someone here to be here on Tuesday during my opening day with the staff just because they had done a lot of work Wonderful. leading up to that and that was like the first real big presentation since they had done work and they were they had someone here to just you know in wow. everything there was not a problem you know, we, it, was, it went well. So you're right, Jerry. They All the costs good. for those those items are covered through SSBC? Yeah, Correct. Not, okay. It was money held from the uh, the the sub. The, Aukers is kind of the sub subcontract yeah. mm -hmm. con contractor. The subcontractor, we, we kind of. Yeah. Which was Ostro. Ostro, <laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah. We purchased the microphones. <laughs> yes, we yes. purchased the microphones. Microphone yeah. purchase came from. That was through money. facility yeah. rental, correct? Correct. Yeah. 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 But the, there was an allotment of money that was not paid to Austria to just kind of say, look, you're done. We're going to kind of work with this. And that was all agreed upon. And right now, we've spent out of that allotment, I, I'm going to be bringing a bill to the meeting on Tuesday night. I think it's $1,037. So there's, there's still a good amount of money there for us to, um, I'd say, enact the recommendation that Auckers is making on various pieces of equipment or you know, wiring of things or, or improvements that they would make to, 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 to enhance performance. So two other things that um, are related to the building project, maybe not 100% related to the SSBC. One is I want to report that um, we're getting full use of the all-purpose field now and nothing but rave reviews. That thing is like a putting green. It really is. Um, watching the soccer teams down there. Every day. So um, given the pain that some of us on this uh, at this uh, table went through to get that done, I'm very happy to see that. The other thing is I do want to mention, I don't think we've mentioned it before, but um, we are looking at the issues in the back parking lot. Um, there are some cracks. And I know, John, you said you were going to be bringing that to the SSBC next Tuesday. I am Tuesday. on Tuesday. Yeah, I'm glad you mentioned that. Thank you. That's something I, I forgot to talk about. But yeah, we, I'm a little, you know, I think we need to do some uh, kind of proactive um, work in, in addressing some cracks in the pavement that um, really should be done before the winter. So I've been working with the public works director of the town to, to get a, a, an estimate, and I have that, and I'm going to be talking, I brought it up a little bit this morning at Finance Planning, but I'll be bringing it up at the SSBC on Tuesday. And we, we have been discussing that with Gilbane, and bottom line is everybody's telling us that it's a year warranty. However, there is some pretty serious cracks back there with yeah. um, a lot of grass growing through. And for how many years was the high school down there, 55 years or 60 years or whatever? I don't remember the parking lot ever looking like that. So... Um, 
it's it's an issue. We're dealing with it, and we're going to get it. We're going to at least have some kind of fix before the winter because if we don't, there's a, there's a yeah. real potential that water gets underneath, it freezes, it cracks, mm -hmm. then we have a huge But again, it, it's a tribute to the SSBC and to the school department right. because it's three and a half years later, four school seasons later at the high school, and we're still like rabid dogs on Gilbane exactly. uh, and, and PMA trying to get everything done. So right. yeah. we haven't let go, we no. haven't let them get away. Um, <laughs> right. So it's, uh, you know, we'll continue to pursue remedies, that's for sure. Anything else on the school building project? I don't think so. Okay. Think so the next SS SSBC meeting is next is Tuesday. Is next Tuesday, correct. 530. Right. Maureen, do you have a question? Can I just ask the spelling of the sub-subcontractor? Yes. Uh, Ockers, it's O-C-K-E-R-S. Right. Okay. Next, uh, move to new business. And Mr. Bernard, do you have a report on opening day? I, I, I will say that um, based on uh, Facebook, the first three days seemed to have gone really well. <laughs> Well, that's Something good. Did I'm come glad. up today. I'll we'll talk to you. I'm <laughs> glad to hear it. I'm glad to hear it. We, uh, I honestly, I really, I, I, I could not be more pleased with with the opening to the, to the new school year. I think uh, all reports um, from the schools uh, that I've received have been very positive. Um, I made the conscious decision on the first day of school to not be um, at the three elementary schools. I just have a former principal. I know that there's just a lot to do, and I didn't want to be in the way so I left them all alone but I let them know that I would be there on Thursday and actually Michael and I went around to all three elementary schools and um, we spent quite a, more yeah, time than yeah. I think we probably spent two hours in total maybe with the three yes. schools um, and had a really good uh, a really good walk through and, and saw a lot of students and teachers and I just think there was a really ni a lot of nice energy in the schools yeah. but a lot of a lot of good you know work goes on in the in the summertime to prep for the opening day and um, you know, it was it was um, it was very good. I just I really think it was seamless, and it's you know it's it's business as normal by now. And I think our opening day with staff, opening day meeting with staff, and I appreciate the committee, all the committee members being um, there on on Tuesday um, to 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 speak. You know, and Mr. Webster, I agree with you know I, I appreciate your um, comments, and I, I I know the staff does too, and um, and I think your presence there means a lot. You know that you take the time to to come and, 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 and to be a part of that day is, um, it's important to me and it has meaning, I think, for, for, the, for the district. So, you know, I'm really, I'm very, very thankful to not only the folks that work for the district, but also, you know, the students, they, they just, they come to school clearly understanding. My, 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 my experience is that they clearly understand, you know, no matter their age, pre-kindergarten, kindergarten, what their primary purpose is and why they're in school and their parents are just, um, extremely positive and supportive and so I, I'm you know we had we had not a single bus issue no, reported to us no. um, just a very very good opening to the day and I'm, I'm very happy to report that to all of you and to the public John if I could I I, I usually don't do this but I really appreciated uh, Peter Kane's words I thought he gave an excellent um, speech in terms of what he focused on and yeah you I know agree. what the impact teachers have and I, yeah. I, I thought I thought it was I just thought the whole day was excellent but um, unfortunately I couldn't stay for the insurance presentation but uh, I wish I wish I could have want to stay. Oh. <laughs> uh, that looked like it was gonna be excellent but um, no, it was great to be there and Julie and I had a good time the week before yes at the new teacher the luncheon, luncheon. Yeah, yeah, that was yeah, a lot was of good. fun good. Um, yeah. sitting with people and you're saying oh my god I'm so old this is Pitiful. Um, I was sitting with two um, yeah. teachers who are both uh, their long-term subs. They're here for a year. Well, I think both at the middle school. And I started talking to them, they, and they went to Austin Prep. And of course, they're like a year old. They're like a year older than my son and other people. And so they they know. And I'm like, I can't really sit here and talk to, to you about my son. And I to believe that it really is crazy. Yeah, yeah. yeah, I yeah. Agree. But that was it. Was a nice group. Nice group of teachers. I've been working in education longer longer than some. Oh, I know. People we're hiring have been alive. Exactly. Yeah, but it was by, a good by a number of years. <laughs> good group, and one thing that was yeah. impressive. I mean, turnover in general. You're always going to have turnover. But very few new teachers at the high school. It's almost like two or three. I think we have uh, new phys ed two, teacher, two and one long term sub. Right, right. That's good. But that was good. Thank you. So glad you have first day. Good first day. Now, do you have uh, enrollment? Is Michael going to talk about that or? Um, I did, I did see Either one of us can. I actually sorry, had some yeah. questions. I had some questions on enrollment. Sure. Because I saw that the the number right now is 24, uh, 29, 2494. 2494. And Michael, I was looking at the projections, and we had projected yep. 2453 for this year. 
Okay. So we have 41 more students than projected. I'm not, I'm not casting, I'm just saying we ought to start thinking about Going back to the finance committee and getting more money. No, no, that's oh. not what I was going to say, Mr. Venezia. You always put words in my mouth that cause problems right, for right, me, right. sir. Um, is that correct? Because next year we have a projection of 2404. I took these off the website today. Eight to nine as well. Yeah, I mean, I'll certainly. I'll... I'm just, I'm just, because I'm just wondering if we're going to have to redo, because I don't think we're going to drop 100 students to, to next year, you know? Right, I think what will happen is when we redo, when we get the official October 1, we'll. We'll relook at all the survival, the, you know, the, the percentages of, um, and redo the projections, and this will it will obviously, you know, correct. And I think we'll look at where the variances were, and, and look at what our assumptions. And what we do is we look at the three, five, and ten year survival rates, and right. the percentage, and then look at what's going on with the housing market and developments in town, and we try to come up with a, a percentage of, you know, survival ratio, I guess, for lack of a better word, at each at each grade, and. I think I know kindergarten is definitely higher than what we projected. We thought it was going to be a lower um, kindergarten potentially due to the the birth rates that were five or six years uh, prior. Um, so am I seeing that we, correct? We have 179 yeah, in kindergarten. Yeah. So that I, I know right. That's, there, that's a lot. A lot I think we were projecting 150. That, that, that came out with the that. budget process. Wow. We knew that it was higher than and what that's we, we had. That yeah, that's why we added that in October. Yeah. October. Um, we also had that, a very, that makes up about 20 students of that. Very that small number. Time from grade eight to grade nine too. Because it'll be interesting to see once on October, sometime in October, we'll have the breakdown of class sizes and all that, right? When you Correct. get the official will, enrollment yeah. number. Yeah. So so kindergarten, and, and don't we usually see an increase from kindergarten to first grade also? Aren't there still parents who send their kids, students to yeah, private? It's mm -hmm. been generally about a 6% increase. So if you increase that by 6%, we're probably talking about 185, 190 for first grade next year. Yep. And we have 166 this year. I guess this is the, I just think we are going to have more students than we're expecting we're going to have because I, I continue to argue, not with you, but with other people right. that we're seeing more families come in and there are more houses being sold like my wife and I or older people, people older than us, who sell their homes and, and we're, get, we're getting an influx of two and three children families, I believe. And it was just interesting to see that we were pretty like almost 2% higher than the projection um, for this year with 41 more students than projected. So I obviously we'll have to keep an eye on that. Um, and that, John, how many, did, do we know how many we lost between that? I think it's seven. Wow. Stu seven students. Not so seven yeah, percent. so from 202 to 195, that's like 3.4%. Yeah, three and three point four percent. yeah that's, uh, that's really low. Yeah, that we've been, hovering around that like five, so it's much lower this year, yeah. and we, which is a good thing, but. We lose hardly any between fifth and sixth, correct? Very, very few, right. yeah. Yeah, I can tell you right now, just very quickly looking at it, the, the major variances to the projections was in the kindergarten, even grade one level, and then the, in the middle school in particular. We had 530 was a projection at the middle school. So the decline that we thought we were gonna see of up to you know over 30 students didn't, didn't really occur, the 30. We thought we were gonna see maybe 40, 40 student decline, it didn't, that didn't occur. And what did we have for kindergarten projection? So kindergarten was, if it's easy to find, it's not. Uh, trying to find the detail on that. I might have to pull up my other spreadsheet. Okay, if you can't. Is it there or no, in that document, no? no. But I, I wanna say we were like in the 160 range, Okay. about my memory, and so we, I think we're about nine, 18, 19 higher. And that, that came out during the, that's the yep. February registration right. process. Right. So I and think between those two, that's almost the, the 40 student difference. Between that and you've got nine new homes going in over in the little, little district. Yeah. And you've got new homes going in. There was, a, uh, there was a piece of property sold that was like 12 acres. And I heard there's another six or seven homes going in there. So even though we don't have the big developments and, you, and, and the teardowns, which in a lot of cases just sad, you're, seeing, you're still seeing a lot of teardowns yeah. and big houses being right. built. Families. So, yeah. so Michael, when will you revise the... Um, so when we, once we have the official yes. October 1, uh, we will wait for the October 1 count. I'll plug that into my database, do some research, get some birth rates, you know, talk to um, you know, the, the town um, clerk's office and get some, get some data and then revise, revise the numbers. And then I think November 13th is the official presentation out to, uh, 
to each of the, the school committee the okay. enrollment projection presentation. Okay. Um, so, any other questions or comments on um, opening day? I have to agree with John that it seems, as I said, it seems to have gone extremely yeah. well. Yeah. Um, Very pleased. I mean, this is the first year I can remember in a long time where there wasn't either a phone call, an email, or something on social media about buses not picking up kids, buses showing up 45 minutes late, 45 minutes early, wrong bus stop. I didn't see any of that. And I think that's attributed to the hard work that I happens, agree. you know, over the right. summer to make sure that things run as smoothly right. as possible. And we also didn't increase fees, so we didn't have any right. complaints. <laughs> any complaints about fee? I mean, no one likes to pay fees, but we didn't increase them. There's always so. complaints. Yeah, yeah. but we kept kept them at you know. So just really quickly going back, so kindergarten was actually uh, forecasted at 150. Wow, wow. And I think it was that data we kind of questioned. It was that we had the birth rate data of the you know five or six years prior, which was what drives the, that number, and it, it seemed to be a decline. But I think. What that actually underestimated was all the move-ins. Move-ins. Mm -hmm. 50, geez. So that's, that's a big, yeah. everything else is actually pretty accurate, with the exception of a couple of grades at the middle school, but I think that's the big delta right there was the kindergarten. And so then when you, move that, when you move that forward, you could be going from a first grade of 166 to a first grade of 185 to 190 right. when you add, add kids in. So right. although it's spread over three schools, so yeah. it should be, as long as they're not all in one district, it should be doable. Anything else? I think that's all I have, Mr. Chairman, on opening day. Okay. Yeah. Thanks, John and Michael. Okay, next we have a presentation by Michael on a proposal for large capital projects for next year and also a, basically a five year look at where we are. Michael? So uh, there is a presentation. This is one of us see a PowerPoint. Take a microphone. Um, in your packet, I'll just. We remind you that obviously there was a copy of the PowerPoint slides as well as the five-year capital plan template that we've been using to guide this process over the last uh, few years here. Um, so I thought tonight we would touch upon review the capital items proved for fiscal 18. Uh, there was, we had a busy summer and a lot of the projects and things that we got approved in fiscal 18 ordered and received and um, distributed, et cetera. So we'll, we'll, I thought we'd start by touching upon those items, then discuss the five-year large capital plan, but with a focus on fiscal 19 items, but we'll also look to some of the items in the future, both three and five years out. Um, we'll review the CIPC timeline and process. As you know, what gets approved here by the committee gets submitted to the Capital Improvement Planning Committee later this month or in October for further consideration. And then obviously we'll leave time for discussion and questions. So I think the idea is sort of to present what the administration's recommendation, we've been at it for a couple months. We worked um, throughout the summer months trying to make some changes to the plan, which we'll highlight for you this evening and then open up for discussion and questions. But I think we're looking um, for an actual vote at the next meeting on September 25th. So the computer replacements of 60,000 for fiscal year 18, I'm happy to report that we ordered um, about 220 Chromebooks with the appropriation of $60,000. They were received in um, the end of July and certainly configured by the summer tech team um, here. And then just this past end of the month, I mean August 30th and August 31st, there was meetings held with parents and both Dr. Daly and Dr. Downs and their team, a digital learning team, and they um, distributed to the seventh graders to begin the one-to-one -one initiative in the district. So a very exciting time and everything went very, very well. Um, the elementary Wi-Fi upgrade, I'm happy to report that project also was completed in, in July and everything went very, very well. So the, certainly the, as a refresher, the, the majority of these funds were supported by a state grant, digital learning grant that the district received. The upfront cost was the 107357 shown here on the slide, but we are waiting for about a $63,000 E-rate reimbursement, and everything is filed, and I would say around the January or February time frame, the town would receive a reimbursement check to help offset this cost. So, Mike, can you, uh, I try to take huge credit for you and Dr. Downs and, and Patrick every time I can on this issue. 
Can you tell us what the total cost was and the fact that, um, and make it clear that the town, I'll make it clear, the town's going to be paying $44,000 right. basically once we get the E-rate. What was the total cost? This was about a $275,000 total total cost. And it's it started actually much higher and through some competitive um, RFPs that we've put out multiple times. We made it a very competitive process. And the final award was closer to about $275,000. So the grant that we received was about 60% of th that cost. And then the upfront cost by the town uh, was the 107, 357, the 40% you know, of that cost. But then um, E rate helps uh, bring in another $62,000. So you're right, the, the final net impact was about $43,000, $44,000. And I think, I know the committee is, I know the selectmen and the finance committee and the town administrator, but the, the whole town should be appreciative that we were able to do a pretty large project for $43,000 of, of town taxpayer money. I think that's pretty impressive. And yeah, it's a tribute absolutely. to you guys for getting this work done. And certainly the benefit is huge. Um, the elementary schools are going to experience that and they're already certainly using it and to great to great the great advantage. It's and it was a lot it was a busy work that started and um, but everything went very, very well. Because um, basically it didn't work before I mean it worked but it was very sketchy as how right. how well it worked. Yeah now there's a robust Wi Fi similar to this building throughout each elementary school. Before it was kind of in pockets, you know, at certain schools and you had to bring out the card and, and, and sign on and so forth. But now that's not the case. Excellent. Which is great. Um, the third project was the Bachelor School Peabody Street entrance repair. It was a twenty five thousand dollar appropriation to address the front entrance repair, the concrete pad and the columns and the woodwork and so forth. So this was a picture uh, back over a year ago that we presented as part of this request. You can see there was some certainly work needed in these columns and in the front you know, concrete area. Um, and this kind of shows you the progress. We had the concrete pad was sort of poured and um, replaced and redone at the beginning of August. We then had some the work, the carpenters then worked on the columns. Um, we repaired many of these wood pieces up here. Uh, and the, all the four columns were replaced with more of a, um, you know, a non-wood product for long-lasting. And then we received a nice, a nice fresh, you know, paint job as well. And the final product here is in this picture. So it definitely came out very, very nice. One thing to explain on that, I, I don't think much work, if any, was done to this area when the school was rebuilt. I mean, I know there was some work done, but this wasn't a focus area when the school was. Re this is part of the original building, correct? Yeah, Which is. Absolutely pretty old so it looks great and what was it twenty five thousand twenty five thousand dollars so yep. very good well worth it all right so all three projects that were approved and appropriated in fiscal 18 are were completed um, so now that brings us to the looking ahead fiscal 19 through fiscal 23 as a reminder we, we tend to focus our large capital requests in these three areas uh, vehicles our vehicle our fleet of vehicles technology facilities um, the as a reminder, the criteria for including an item as a large capital request to the CIPC it must have a useful life of at least five years and have a total cost of $25,000 or more. So here's a quick snapshot of the three-year chart. I know your, your template and your plan, we go out five years. The CIPC right now is looking at three years. So this is um, where we're at from fiscal 19 through fiscal 21 in the three major capital category areas. Um, we did our, our best to sort of attempt to balance off the requests um, over the, the next three to five years. We tried to you know, not have any one year that was a great huge outlier. That would be a challenge for the town to suddenly come up with the additional appropriation. Um, I'm going to go back to this chart at the end and show you where we where this chart compares to the what's been approved over the last you know three to five years as well, um, but I think it's fair to say we have about over nine hundred and fifty thousand dollars of large capital requests and needs, um, really over the next three years. So we're going to start looking at vehicle requests, um, and for fiscal nineteen next year we have a we're actually bringing back um, the multifunction activity vehicle request. This was a request that we had on the plan um, in the past. It had become very close to being funded by the CIPC, but hadn't quite made the, the cutoff line for approval by the CIPC. We then deferred it last year and pushed it out a little bit. 
But I think it's fair to say over the last year, we've really seen even a, the need for this type of a vehicle even increase, even in, in particularly not only by the athletic teams and the athletic transportation, which I think would be the, the, the core use of the vehicle. We're seeing a lot of extracurricular um, you know, clubs and, and various uh, uh, uses of the vehicle that would, could happen even during the school day, field trips, extracurricular events as well. Um, but we feel that if, this, if we had access to this vehicle, again, it's a 15 passenger vehicle, that the athletic department could use this anywhere between 45 and 60 athletic runs throughout the year. Now we contract out for athletic transportation and we're currently paying anywhere between 280 and 300 dollars per run. So if we're able to optimize the use of this type of a vehicle, we feel we could save anywhere between 13,000 and 16,000 dollars on an annual basis. So other, other than tennis, what could we use it for? So I think I think a lot of the teams Golf. that Oh, you know, golf, golf too. yeah. Tennis. Um, a lot of the teams that when they get into either tournament level and they're oh, right, only, when, you know, right. basketball is only states. 12 or states level, we think it could, it could definitely be used. Right. So I've certainly worked with the athletic director, Dave Johnson. He's, he's identified and gone through the schedule, and we feel there's about 45 in that range. Well, actually, if you, so if you look at there's 18 to 20 tennis matches, right? Mm -hmm. So yeah. one team is home, one team's away. So uh, there's nine or And then there's 15 or so golf matches. Yep. Yeah. Same. So you're at 33, 35 already. Okay, I can, I can see that. Yeah. yeah. We can get to that. Yeah. Um, Jerry? Jerry? Uh, Mike, do we have any contractual obligation with, under our bus contract to... to we do not. So we can take these out then? I mean, we don't have to go through the bus company? That's correct, yeah. We're not obligated. We, can, we have our right to purchase our own vehicles and, and um, try to bring as much in-house as we, as we can. Um, the good thing about this is you only need a, as the, a valid driver's license to operate the vehicle. So we would certainly, if this were approved and a, adopted, we would come up with the parameters to the, to the in-house staff that would potentially be using the vehicle of, of, of what, what that, you know, what the appropriate use of the vehicle is. Um, Mike, Julie has a question. Julie? Yes. So would other levels be able to use the vehicle, like not just the high school, the middle Correct. school, and yep. perhaps some elementary if they're going to ro robotics. That's right. Tournament. Yep. We would see some sense. some clubs, some yep, some robotics, and our new robotics, you know, competitions could be coming up this year. And um, absolutely, you know, there are times that during the school day where even there's even a group of staff that are going to a professional development opportunity, and and you know they don't want to take their own vehicles and carpool, and you know this is something that could be uh, available for th for the items like that. I've come around on this um, almost 100 percent, almost 180, about 160. Okay. Um, one issue: What's the liability issue in terms of? So a teacher could drive it. Uh, we wouldn't let a student drive it. I would assume. No. Nope. They could, but we wouldn't let them. Right. So what kind of insurance? Do we have to get a different kind of insurance, or? No. So we this would be this vehicle would be added to our fleet of vehicles covered under our existing insurance company with the, the town's insurance carrier, and as long as it's a staff. Um, covered under our general liability and, you know, insurance package, umbrella package, um, going to a school-sponsored event. If there's you know, an accident or, God forbid, an issue, everything would be covered. Good. Um, so one thing to, to highlight as well, though, is that the actual current estimated cost of this vehicle is about $50,000. So it's gone up a little bit from the request. We had about forty-five a few years ago. Um, so the market's changed a little bit. but. We propose, because we really want to try to push this, push this through, that the request to the CIPC would be about $35,000, and we would actually use the estimated savings in year one to offset that cost. Um, we think that it would have a better um, you know, potential to be adopted and approved, and then everything after year one, we're, we're seeing the savings directly. I think that's a real good way to sell it. It's a reasonable request. The only request I would have is that we have a Hornet painted on the side. It would be personalized. Sure. It would be personalized would be, to North yeah, Reading, correct? District, yeah. As you can see, this is some other vehicle. These are some other vans. It's tough to see in the picture, but I think that's Westboro. It might be yeah. Lincoln. Um, there was one out there it. very similar today for tennis, but I think it was a, you know, another transportation company. I don't think it was yeah. okay. for the yeah. school. Okay. Very similar. Great. So then if you look at the future vehicle requests, um, some things, you know, a couple of years out, we, as you know, we have a fleet of four special education van uh, needs, and um, we've replaced three of those four vans over the last four years. The final van in need for replacement is a 2007 van 
which currently has over 121,000 miles on it. It's currently used as a spare, although I do say it does receive you know, pretty daily or, or weekly use um, in, in our current operation. Um, but the plan would be to replace this vehicle. It's, we've, keep it, we've kept it in good shape, but as you know, it's, when you get over 120,000 know, miles on any vehicle, it's, it's certainly getting to the point where it's reaching the end of its useful life. So we definitely see a need to continue this request. If this would be funded in the capital plan as presented and supported in fiscal 20, the idea is that this van would then move down and replace what is currently being used by the food service department, which is a minimal use van, but that, that food service vehicle is a 2005 vehicle, so then this would come down and we'd uh, replace that vehicle. The building grounds uh, department, we have uh, we've replaced a van, um, you know, a pickup truck several years ago, and this, this truck is sort of the next priority in the building grounds department. It's currently being used, 2009 vehicle currently used by one of our maintenance and ground staff. Um, it's a high usage vehicle. It's used for snow removal and sanding in the winter months. And certainly when we get to the year, you know, fiscal 21, this vehicle would be getting up to the point where it would be in need for a replacement, you know, given the high usage. And that's this vehicle here. Technology requests, the next area. So as you know, for the last four consecutive years, we've received an allotment of $60,000 to re uh, bring in either combination of new computer devices, which is really what it, what it has been the last two years, and in some cases replace some of our existing uh, computers in, in the district. So we're certainly seeing that the need for you know, both ongoing computer replacements as well as addition, de additional devices ever, you know, ever increasing as the school district definitely strives to meet its demands for a computer-based state standardized testing, as well as advance the one-to-one -one initiative that, was, uh, that would begin this school year. So this $60,000 allotment would allow us to continue that one-to-one -one initiative. It's a very, certainly important uh, request and part of what's becoming part of our, the curriculum and our digital learning goals. And we feel it would help us provide all students with a comprehensive 21st century learning experience. Michael, as of now, I know things will change as new technology comes down the road, but pretty much we're putting all this money toward Chromebooks, correct? correct. Mm -hmm. yep. We don't really need servers anymore or anything because everything is just uh, going right to the internet. We don't need desktops. Yeah, we're we don't, towards more virtual. Right, everything's in the cloud, so right. using Google Docs, et, et cetera. Correct. Okay. So what is a new request? in the technology area is an item that you would not have seen in the past and certainly is connecting with Dr. Daly and Dr. Downs on the needs and kind of what's on the horizon is we are seeing a need for an additional line item which we currently do not have in our general fund for instructional equipment and this is a request for $45,000 and we're seeing a need to replace technology items in the classrooms particularly at the three elementary schools um, and this is, would essentially be the smart boards, you know, the overhanging projectors, and in some cases, I iPads at the elementary level. So many of these devices were brought in over 10, 10 years ago, and um, some of them are either not functioning or functioning poorly, and they're certainly reaching the end of their useful life. So we feel you know, developing a plan uh, where we have some <coughs> funds um, either every other year in the range of forty to $45,000 set aside for instructional equipment to help supplement the computer request, it would allow us to identify certain classrooms that are in most need at the elementary level, all three elementary schools, um, and, and help us to start to replace some of these smart boards and projectors, which are, are definitely reaching the end of their useful life. <coughs> oh, Mike, yes. I, I have one question. So the smart <coughs> boards, the things that are there now, was that equipment originally purchased by the school department? Was it purchased by something else or were these donations from the PTOs? It's, it's a combination. Okay. It's a combination. Yeah, there definitely there was some that were supported by the PTO <coughs> donations, um, you know, some that were perhaps supported if you even look back at the bachelor, you know, project. I think some might have been brought in, in back in 2006. So then, you know, now those are 10 or 11 years old, believe it or not, you know, certainly time goes by. And the little in the hoods, a lot of those are PTO donations. But yes, Mr. I was going to add to, <clears throat> we also repurposed a lot of materials Correct. out of the old did, middle yeah. school and high school. <coughs> but those were paid for through, obviously, through the school department. Michael, I just have one question. Mm -hmm. I believe the Hood PA, I'm not sure if it was two years ago or three years ago, perhaps 
did some sort of baseline what was functioning at the Hood School okay. as far as this type of equipment. Is it safe to say that we need to add more or adjust? Because I think they made some sort of donation to get everything up and running. Yeah. Whether it was projectors or bulbs or things like that. So, okay. you know, how, how does it stand at this point? Is it just further, you know, equipment is getting old and just needs to be replaced or? Yes, that's main, mainly what it is. Mm -hmm. I think, you know, the different schools are in a little bit different areas. Some schools sure. may be in more of a need in this area, you know, smart board, smart board area than, than others. But we feel a request <coughs> maybe in this range every other year would allow us to identify the classrooms in the most need. We're talk, you know, this would essentially get a six to eight classrooms, a, a school, it might be a little bit more in a school in a given year and allow us not to ensure that there's not a given year where we're just, these are breaking down that can't be used. Um, so and are you like, looking for smart boards or you don't know? I think it would be, it would definitely be whether it's a smart board or a Mimeo board or something to that effect. Yeah. I know this building was the Mimeo boards. It would be something, you know, we would certainly submit proposals, get the most cost, cost effective solution. It, I guess the other thing is with the um, functioning Wi-Fi system now, right. the Correct. smart boards become more effective Mm -hmm. Now Correct. that we have Wi-Fi, that's successful in every part of every right. elementary building. Mm -hmm. Whereas before, you could use them, but you didn't get as much use out of them as you might because, you know, Correct. you Correct. A network couldn't handle it. Right. Yeah. Right. Any other questions on technology? Okay. So the third area is the facility area of facilities. And I think as we know, what's item that's been in the plan in the past is the little school gym floor. So we did receive... And confirm that the forty thousand dollar allotment for next year would allow the little school gym floor to be replaced. This floor was installed in 1997 and certainly showing signs of de deterioration. It's definitely reaching the end of its useful life. The current floor is a plastic sectional floor, and it's really not the same quality with the flooring at the other elementary schools. So the proposed floor, which is this picture here, is more of a synthetic rubber athletic floor. It would be very <coughs> similar to the floor at the Bachelor in the Hood Elementary Schools. Um, and the proposal does include the removal of the and the disposal of the existing floor and installation of game lines. I could let Jerry make the comment, but uh, I, I, I don't understand how from the beginning that floor ever got installed. Uh, it was almost installed, I think, with a mindset of a, uh, almost a, not game, a, gym. a right. game type. Right, room, exactly. As opposed to a gymnasium. Opposed to a gymnasium, yeah. So, you know, I mean, the rubber floors hold up really well, um, and they're much more yeah. um, useful for basketball right. and things like that, exactly. which is a big demand right now right. as far as basketball and court time. So. Yeah, we think for the $40,000 appropriation, we think there would be a, a significant enhancement to what you know, the overall experience is in that, in that gymnasium. Is like, place on the floor. Is there, a, is there a, well, two questions. Is, is there a proposed life for a gym floor usually? Because it seems like 20 years is kind of pushing it, and then. It wasn't built for a gym. Honestly, it wasn't built, built for a gym. Okay. I think, I think it's, I think it's yeah. the material. You should have replaced it's, it yeah. 19 it years ago. It wasn't yeah. practical. It was right. Installed yeah. Before, so. and, and again, I mean, just, just in anything, I mean, I think we need to prioritize things like cost savings, like the vehicle, I think, is something to prioritize. Mm -hmm. And I think the first, number one priority needs to be safety. Yeah, this and, is. And this is clearly a safety That's what I would potential issue yeah. at some point, if, yeah. you know, young kids are running around that, you know, are falling on concrete or whatever no, it's material. Not <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's becoming difficult to, you know, clean regularly. It just, it's, you know, it's, um, it's compromised, you know, it's, it's challenging. Michael, do you know the process? Is this like a poured rubber floor or? Yeah. It's liquid. I believe, they so they a liquid in there. And, and then they level it. Batch, it's a yeah. Liquid. Right. That's the goal. Correct. Yeah. Yeah. And it let, they level it and it just hardens, right? And that's yep. it. So, did you watch the entire construction? This is on the company's website that you got the proposal from. There were some photos of what you would get. So. Okay. So the other request that also is a fiscal 19 request, which would be for next year, is a maybe similarly to the hood project that we did in uh, fiscal 16 and 17 would be a little school paving project. We're certainly seeing a need, um, and the most immediate need would be. Um, this area here, which as you may recall, we removed the old little school playground uh, last, you know, late, late fall, early winter, and some temporary gravel was, was placed down in that area. And we're certainly seeing a need to expand that parking lot area. So this allotment would both achieve that. You would be able to expand and pave over the existing gravel, um, increase the number of parking spaces at the, at the school, 
and then you would also be able to repair and um, repave the majority of that kind of staff main parking lot here where we're seeing some raised areas, some deterioration, some cracking, and so forth. Um, so we think you know this allotment would uh, you know accomplish a lot and also expand expand the parking lot. Which, um, and speaking with Miss Molly, we know we're seeing a real need for that. Uh, Do you have any idea how many spaces we can get in there? Um, we we actually received a proposal from this section, uh, and I want to say the DPW's proposal with their contractor was about this section would cost about twelve or thirteen thousand dollars. Yep. I don't know. I, I I can't remember how many spaces. It's off. badly needed over there. Yeah. Any any time there's any event, you know, mm -hmm. be it the, when the school now. committee's there, and yeah, you just can't right. find any place to park. Plus that area is an eyesore right now. It, it, is, an, it, is, it is a bit of an eyesore. What yeah. we're experiencing this year, as recent as today, is the plague, the new playground, which is great, but there's people are staying. Staying, right. Parents are staying at the end of the school day. The children are playing on the playground, which is great, but the spaces aren't freeing up like they used to for, say, a dismissal time. Yeah, well, I, I, would, I would just emphasize, I mean, I think it's, it's dangerous, but, you know, there's no parking, but it's not even just for events. It's normal drop-off and Oh, yeah, absolutely. Not events. I mean, and, yep. and all the other locations, there's, like, long entryways in, and, and it's just, it's, and the, the PTO spent so much money doing the beautiful playground there yep. that it's just a shame that the parking lot looks like this when, you know, the people of this, of this town have stepped up so much to fund that. And, you know, and even just some, some better markings, you know, access to the playground is another thing where, you know, kids are running across. And I know Mrs. Molly's always concerned about, you know, somebody getting hit because it's not really well, you know, like mm -hmm. shown like wh where to go and turnarounds and things like that. I, th I think the parking lot's just atrocious compared to all the other parking lots. Questions on this? So some of the future items. I mean, some of these we've moved around a little bit from last year's plan as we kind of reprioritize some items. But actually, a new request is a appropriation which we have in year two of the plan for the Little and Hood School lighting upgrades. So we feel a request of about fifty thousand uh, dollar appropriation would help us begin the process of upgrading the lighting in the main, mainly the common areas, in the gymnasium, cafeteria main hallways, you know, library, et cetera, that we think would certainly go a long way in not only providing it, it would be LED lighting fixtures that we think would certainly create and reduce energy lighting consumption by potentially up to 50 to 70 percent, which is what, um, you know, data shows what you can certainly, the energy efficiency of an LED system. Um, but we think it would just provide the, the dish, you know, the schools as well with a big upgrade and the enhancement over the, the lighting and the, and the overall look of the, of the school, the interior of the school. Michael, is there any kind of chance to work with RMLDs or are there any kind there of is, programs yes, there, there is. we could? So you know, we would certainly reach out to RMLD. They do have LED lighting upgrades and they offer rebates for energy efficiency measures. So that, that would be something that would absolutely be researched because uh, that, that does exist. Um, the second item is Hood School modular demo, demolition. So this oh, was an item that Michael was Michael, has a question. Oh, yes. Michael, um, did you say it was a, a multi-year upgrade, or is this trying to get it all done at once? This would accomplish, we feel this amount, you know, we would try to maximize as much working with RMLD, this appropriation. We, it wouldn't do everything, but it would certainly provide that enhancement to those common areas I talked about based on what we've, what we've, what we've researched, the cost of the, the fixtures, et cetera, for LED lighting. Um, and then I think what we would do is kind of reassess what got done, and there might be a need to you know, revise and maybe you know, finish it off after. Okay. But we, we would see what we could get done. But the estimate is, is we would take care of the major common areas. Um, so the Hood School Modular Demolition Project, we had this on the proposal last year. Uh, we recently received, got an assessment. You know, we had a company come in and provide an assessment of both the Hood and the Little Modular Units. Um, so this was a proposal that you know, we still feel is something we have to conclude in the plan. This would be year two of the plan. Um, but we actually feel like you know, the, the proposal just came in on Thursday and Friday, so we just actually were reading it over, uh, reading it on Friday um, and even, uh, even today. Uh, but we feel like some small maintenance, the integrity of both of the module units is actually pretty good. You know, the, the, the flooring system, you know, the roof, the, integrity of the systems are pretty good so with some 
small care and maintenance and upkeep, we could actually extend the life of these units at both, at both schools, you know, certainly a few more years. So this might be something we assess and revisit. Maybe there's not a need to have this in year two. Um, but it's certainly going to have to be addressed, we see, in the next, within the next three to five years. So we, you're saying demolition, but we're going to put new ones there. We need new ones, right? Well, we don't. No. We would not. So the, not the being idea. Used right now? They are. <clears throat> but we have we rent space to yeah. seem collaborative. Oh, so we three classrooms. Right. So we have classrooms. We right. Just we could use them for us. Instead. We would. Now we, we lose, lose revenue rental, with that, right? We lose some rental revenue. Yes. Is that significant? Seventeen thousand. It's about close to eighteen thousand now. The, mm. With the increase this year. <laughs> yeah. That's true. Yeah, the modulars are. Yeah, exactly. But if they're functioning, you know, and we are able to. You know, rent out the space. Then right. it doesn't right. make any sense. I would say to consider. use them as long as we could, as yeah. long as we're well, not. Well, that's. I think the the idea last year was to just kind of plant the seed that they're sure. they're aging. Right. You know, and there is a cost. We spent some money on them last year. We did the um, handicapped accessibility yep. ramp out the back, needing quite a bit of, of of maintenance. So they're not they're not they're not not taking right. money from you know the budget right. too to keep them up and running. Right. But I think you're right. You know, it's not it's not an immediate need, and we had the Structural integrity of S investigated, and you know that's right. okay. So, but how many do we have in the system now? Just the little and the so hood. So we have right? four at the hood, and was the is the fourth? I think there's four at the little as well. Correct. Right? So we have eight modules eight. still in. The ones at the little are needed, right? They're oh, yeah. needed. So if, it, if yeah. we those come offline, we'd have to have a pretty large capital request to replace those. So we we feel, and we were waiting for that um, assessment to come in all summer. You know, it came in like Friday morning. You know, after the publication of the document and so forth, so we think we could try to revisit this, and with some of the the maintenance work, which would not be significant based on the assessment, we kind of in, increase and expand the, the life of, of both the at both these schools. And the ones at the little are they needed because we have the all of the uh, pre K over there. Kindergarten, yeah. correct. Okay, that's correct. So um, the third item on here is a little school asbestos uh, mitigation. So we, again, we did some work at both the little and the hood. Um, a couple years ago, and uh, we're seeing a need to certainly continue this. This would be a fiscal 20 and fiscal 23 project. So about $120,000 we received a proposal um, last year actually from the company that we felt could take care of all the remaining asbestos, you know, you know flooring and so forth at the school. But we find it best to kind of do this in, in phases. So we would like to kind of restart up this project in year two of this plan. Um, and you know certainly continue with the asbestos mitigation, which would essentially include the replacement of the tiling and, the, and the mainly the hallways. There's a few classrooms, but it's mainly the hallways. Michael, the, I think it's always school. important to point out we're talking about asbestos mitigation that there's no is correct danger there's right no now. We just want to replace the asbestos tiles Absolutely. with yep. a new type of flooring, but there's no there's yeah, no issues. Drifting, it's wrong. just something that has to be replaced. And is, right. is, is the 120 thousand divided over the two years or 120,000? That's divided. So I believe the plan calls for about $60,000 in fiscal 20 uh, okay. and a similar amount in fiscal 23. So it take, it's hard to do everything all at once given the timing and you have to right. go through a, a state process to remove and, and mitigate it. So it's easier to kind of do this over a period of a few years. So is the hood complete? The hood is just about complete. The, okay. we fo the prior appropriation focused mainly at the, on the hood, and we, we essentially completed uh, the, the hood school. Okay. The fourth item on this list would be the hood school boilers. So the largest ticket item is the boilers. Uh, we've kind of extended this out into uh, year three of this plan, <clears throat> but the $300,000 to replace these boilers, the idea would be to to bring in high efficiency condensing boilers. We did this at the little school in fiscal year 2012, and if we, if we analyze the, the usage over the last five years, we've certainly, with the new technology of the high efficiency condensing boilers, is definitely, you know, we can definitely save, and I think some estimates you could save up to ten, twelve thousand dollars $12,000 annually, perhaps, um, by the efficiency of these of, of, of new boilers. So. Um, in fiscal year 21, these boilers would be over 20 years old. Um, I was asked this morning at the finance planning team meeting, is it a candidate for accelerated repair project with the MSBA? And it, it would be. So it's something we could certainly keep our eye on. But it is certainly a need to continue to keep this on the horizon in the plan. So there'd be a potential to get 40 some 40 odd percent reimbursement. And a half. Yeah. 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 Um, again, with the MSBA, we know some overhead costs also 
are added to to the cost just because of the process. I mean, and you know, people need to remember that the hood um, renovation was completed in what ninety nine. That's correct. That the final correct. that was the year it opened. Yes. Right. Yeah. So, you know, it doesn't seem like it was that long ago, but it was. It was correct. These are the highlights of the facility. You plan future requests in the horizon over the next three years. Um, I told you I was going to come back to this this three year capital summary chart. And as I, this is the chart I showed you um, at the beginning of the presentation where I said we're making an effort to kind of balance out the requests over the next three years, not to have any huge large ticket item in any given one year for the CIPC to have, have a hard time to, to, to address. Obviously, in year three, if that's the Hood School boilers, which is causing that to be a little bit of an outlier there. Again, could the MSBA and Scoot projects reduce that potentially? Um, if you look at the chart below, then compares the prior three years and what actually was appropriated and approved. Um, so we are making an attempt to, to move things forward. We definitely have large capital needs on the facility side, mainly at the little and hood schools, some of the older elementary schools, to continue to move things forward. But we're also we're trying to be as mindful as we can of what is realistic in terms of what the CIPC and the town can fund under the capital process. And you know, we've we're in that 100. In 4550 to 200 thousand dollar range of what's been able to be appropriated for the school projects over the last three years under the CIPC process, so we're trying to be mindful of that and stay as, as close as we can within that range. And I think we're we're pretty close to achieving that with this plan. Did you know what was requested in 16, 17, 18? What our requests were? I do. Yeah. So if you actually look what what the items were. No, no, the, like oh. the total, like an 18, if 192,000 was approved, what was the request? Oh, okay. Um, you know, if you don't, oh, there fine. was a little bit more in each year. I can tell you that just kind of anecdotally. I know that we, we haven't, we never received a full um, approval of all of our requests. There was always maybe 50 to 60,000 that was not, not supported. There was always Last like year, one request. Last year, I think it was request. just the toolcat that was. It was just the toolcat right. of, right. of 70,000 that wasn't supported here. I think there was. Um, some vehicles that maybe weren't supported here, or maybe the toolcat again, actually. Um, and I think that might have been a fifty thousand dollar request years, here, right? not supported. Yeah. So, Michael, the the one thing that's interesting about the the hood boilers is, and I think you might have touched on this. If if we get involved with the MSBA, it's going to cost more than three hundred thousand dollars. That's correct. I would be yeah. willing to bet. Because so how how do you make it? Can you make a determination ahead of time? Yeah, I mean, how that's something to con consider. I mean, we might we might actually get back to this number for the town exactly after the reimbursement. Right, that's exactly what I'm getting at. So, so I mean, I think the the question is, do you you know would you get a a higher you know efficiency, better you know boiler by working through them? I know that's something you know we'd have to to research and kind of vet when we come to that, that process. The other thing I wanted to ask was, and, and, and I think we do a really good job of this, we pretty much spend every cent we get for capital improvements yeah. on the, and we do it pretty quickly, yeah, correct? Yeah, we don't waste time. Yeah. We, we do. don't have any projects outstanding right now where we've had no. money. Yeah. No. That's excellent. Great. So moving on to, so these are, again, we, we'll be asking you to take an official appropriation of the FY19 and adoption of this plan at September 25th, but with an eye on the focus of fiscal 19, the administration sort of looked at its priorities, keeping in mind what's going to have the greatest impact on the, the classroom, and again, and keeping in mind that, that you know safety to students, staff, and public in the community, et cetera. We landed at putting these five capital requests for fiscal 19 in this priority order. Um, Certainly, the computer devices moving forward with that one-to-one -one initiative um, certainly is, is is key. We feel beginning to replace that technology, instructional equipment, smart boards, memeo boards, projectors is key, not to impact the classroom. And then, I for safety certainly the little school gym floor and the paving project is key. And then obviously that multifunction just because of that payback period is so small. Really, all five of these are really we feel are it was hard to put these in. In an order, um, and, and label one more important than the other. But I guess the only the only change I would make is I would I would probably swap two and three. I just that okay. little that little school gym floor has been something I wanted to replace sure. for like ten years. But yeah. I think that I think I could I could live with this. I know we're not voting on it tonight, but so yeah. go if we get any resistance, just tell them we're going to put in a statement of interest for a new little school. <laughs> and I'm sure that I'm sure that they'll, yeah. they know you want one. Right, exactly. <laughs> 
Well, I mean, I, I, would, I would say I disagree with the priority order. Um, I mean, I just think the replacement technology in particular, it doesn't seem like we even know exactly what that is yet. It's not identified. I think, I think mm -hmm. safety concerns, I mean, the computer devices, I agree with number one. But mm -hmm. I mean, I think safety concerns, I think the paving project actually is, I think it's a danger over there right now. And I actually think that needs to be prioritized higher and potentially the gym floor as well. Okay. But All right, no, thank you. I'm just that's one person, but I mean, I think- no, That's a good point on the paving over there. And with that new new area where it's just basically gravel. Well, and, and, and what, what people do, you, you saw when the building project was going on here, what people were doing to find parking spots over here. Right. You know, when people start parking where they're not supposed to be parking right. and, I mean, to me, it's safety has to be the number one concern. I think the paving project of, is the most dangerous of the of the conditions. So I would put that as as number two, personally. Okay. Very good. I think they're all. I, I think they're all highly viable items to be considered by the CIPC. When the, nothing outrageous up there. You know the multifunction activity bus i've gone back and forth on but you know one it's going to be a fifty thousand dollar bus that we're asking thirty five thousand dollars for mm -hmm. and we'll basically pay for it in two years correct That's with correct. savings yeah. Yeah. well three to four years yeah, but with yeah. thirty five thousand yeah. saying we'll pay in two additional years we'll pay that back who's got to run the uh julie still doing it? yeah back the fork <laughs> <laughs> we try so just a reminder, this is the timeline. So the CIPC is now requesting um, the request sheets a little bit later than in the past. In the past, it was September 30th, now it's October 13th. We're asking the school committee to take an official vote to adopt the plan on September 25th. CIPC typically then reviews the request, makes field trips if necessary to gather all relevant information, November, December timeframe. Um, we then are ranking that request to CIPC members January and February. That sometimes goes into March a little bit. Um, we try to review and come to a consensus of the ranking order in the March, beginning of April time frame. And then typically the CIPC presents to the Board of Selectmen their recommendation in, the, in April and then um, submits the final plan for including a town meeting again in that April, beginning of May time frame. Okay. So, Michael, there was, there was one thing mentioned today at the finance planning team, and I know we're not going to get a number tonight, but there was discussion about what we discussed earlier about the parking lot. And if we can't get some sort of agreement or whatever with Gilbane or, or whoever, that we may have to put some sort of project in at some point for the parking lot. So I just want to make sure that that, I'm not looking for a proposal now, but that's at least in the thought process that maybe in two years, we have to do something there. I, I, I don't know. Looking at it now, I, I just don't know. Would that go through the school committee or would it go through the SSBC? If it would go through the school committee, if, I mean, it depends. It depends on one, how much money are we going to have left after the whole deal is done, right? And two, if we can, if there's an issue with um, workmanship or, or, or whatever, perhaps we have something that can get paid for through one of the contractors. I, I just, I just, I don't know. I just, I just want it to be in there th in the thought process that we may have to consider that. I'm hopefully, hopefully it won't come out of our budget, but just want to think about it. Right. 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 I mean, I think the short-term plan is a good one to prevent any further damage over the winter. It is. I think, it, and I think it'll be interesting to see what does that get us after, exactly after That's a, a winter, right. you know, and how is that a manageable approach? It right. might be. It may not be, though. Your point is well taken. It could be because once more. the winter's over, we'll look next spring and fall, right. summer, and see what what right. develops there. Right. Um, but again, the, you know, we were told it's 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 the warranty's up, a one-year warranty. Correct. So, right. any other questions or comments? Or Mike. Great. So Great job, are you, Michael. Are you, are you, you clear on what for the twenty fifth? Yeah. You're on what we'll be looking for. Okay. Yeah. I, I do I do I just I just want to say I, I think I do agree with Scott on that um, paving that that maybe should be moved up on the on the priority list also. Great. I knew we'd find agreement eventually now. Took a long time. <laughs> 
taken eight meetings. <laughs> Thanks, Michael. Excellent, excellent preparation as usual. Oh, thank you. Okay, next we have, are we to minutes already? Yes. We are on minutes. You are on minutes. We just have one set of minutes, correct? All for the August 20th. Oh, they're all in one thing. Yes. We have the regular uh, open session goals workshop from August 28th, 2017. Can I have a motion to approve? Can I make a motion? to approve the open session goals workshop for August 27th, or sorry, 28th, 2017. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Unanimous. Then we have the executive session on August 28th, 2017. We make a motion to accept the executive session minutes of August 28th, 2017. Second. Discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Unanimous. And then we have the open session minutes from August 28th, 2017. Okay. I'd like to make a motion to accept the open session minutes of August 28th, 2017. Second by Julie. Thank you. Silent second by Julie. Uh, I said it. Very quiet. Uh -huh. Any further discussion on the minutes? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? None. Unanimous. Okay, next. Uh, no budget update, Mike? No, we'll have our first next meeting. Okay. Staffing, nothing, John, right? Correct. Bids and donations, we have nothing tonight. That, too, is correct. Which I think is the first, this is the first Sorry, meeting, I think, time. in you know what? a I long got, we time. We got one today. We oh, we did. I got one today, and I was going to try to sneak it in, but I said, oh. There's one on Thursday. Too. So there, we, do, we do have. Uh, a very long time. Um, next, we have subcommittee updates. Before we get to the finance planning team, which was this morning, I did just want to provide a brief update on the um, Athletic Facilities Committee. Uh, tomorrow we are having our second, uh, not the Athletic Facilities Committee, but we're having our second job meeting with uh, the contractor. Yep. And um, everything seems to be moving along there. They hope to get started next week. Um, we're going to have a lot more details tomorrow. We've spent a lot of time at our first meeting discussing safety and around the area. They're going to put a six-foot chain link fence up. And mm -hmm. um, we did discuss today, and I think John said, or Michael Goberto said, that we should at least notify the police and fire department that that, that will, okay, that so that's today. been done, yeah. that the project will be starting. We've also notif notified Mary Prenny for okay. the uh, senior Oh, right, housing. right there, yeah. yeah. And they were trying to make provisions for concessions during the Exactly. Conference. There was a meeting today, right? There was right? a meeting today. There was a meeting today on that. Okay. The high school principal, athletic director, boosters. Because so. the, the music boosters are the primary. Correct. There's youth football probably and the music boosters. Yeah. Our, Marty Tilton right. is working with youth football, but our, our primary concern was with the music boosters. And so that's what that meeting was about today. I mean, it's going to be challenging, but we're right. you know, doing our best to try to best. accommodate them. Yeah. Only for a short period of right. It's, right. It's exactly. The other thing is... Um, I was talking to uh, track coach Pinsopoulos, and he's very excited because um, he says this will give us a, a really good opportunity to host um, the relay, uh, state relays again, really? although we're, we're being moved up a division in uh, track. Oh, that division? Uh, division two. Two? Two or three? No, three. three. Division three in track. Yeah. We're being moved up a division. Wow. And, but he's, he was excited about having that new facility because in the past we've always had an issue where we've almost lost the meet because we didn't have uh, uh, restrooms. So. That'd be good. So finance planning team, um, I don't know, Jerry, you want to take that? Um, pretty much the primary uh, thing that we did today was to go through the October town meeting warrant uh, from articles one to 19, and I'm not gonna bore you with that. Um, Mel actually did uh, give them a briefing on the, on the bathrooms and is probably gonna do a very brief report yes. um, as part of article one, which is action, act on reports of town offices and committees. Um, you know, there's some monies in there that's going to be moved around and transferred into stabilization, uh, the, the uh, capital improvement stabilization fund. Um, I think there's some prior uh, years bills. To various, be paid. yeah, a couple, uh, very, yeah, very a couple small of number bills to be paid. Nothing, nothing really significant. I no. think um, there is an article on there, Article 17, requesting an additional $150,000 uh, for legal fees relating to the school project. Um, and, uh, I think they said that 150 wasn't final. They expected yeah, that's what they, the number would be. Yeah, but they expected that was the number. Right. 
And there was a great deal of the warrant, if you take it when it comes out, Articles 10 through 14 are dealing with the water situation, the MWRA. So there's already been a lot done. In order to change um, the, the plan from the MWRA to the end of a water supply, we have to go back to town meeting to do that because that was all voted by town meeting. And there's a lot of work yet being done by the Board of Selectmen and the town administrator trying to negotiate and iron out the details of any type of a water agreement. So spent a lot of time doing that. Um, I don't know, Mel, if was there anything else directly about related? It. We did talk about um, at the end. Oh, we, budget. We talked about budget schedules. Budget schedules, yeah. Yeah. But that was. We gave them out, but Mike had the budget schedule yeah. with him, and uh, he gave them ours, which I think we've already received. And so I think our our uh, schedule is consistent with what their schedule is. So there was a mention by uh, Mike Prisco, the chairman of the board of selectmen, that they were going to take maybe a little bit of a different approach to their budget building this year, uh, including maybe looking at, in addition to a what they would normally call a uh, level services budget, to a, an initiative budget that may have some initiatives above and beyond the level services. So, you know, we'll deal with all that when the time comes. John, anything else? I think that pretty much covers it. Is there anything else? No, I think um, there was a little bit of a talk about the building project. Oh, right. This, yeah. build, this building project and where yeah. things were at, and yeah. we gave them a summary much like I gave tonight. Right. Um, but I think those were the four or I'd five I'd say major between items. the water issue uh, um, and the Berry property issue, you know, the selectmen are very busy right yeah. now trying to get those things wrapped up, and they're still working very hard on getting the Berry. Uh, project signed, sealed, and delivered, I think, by December 1st, so that they can maximize the, the amount of money that we're going to collect them. Yep. Okay. Right. For um, the subcommittee schedule, athletic subcommittee is meeting tomorrow at 1230. I already mentioned this isn't a subcommittee meeting of ours, but I mentioned that the work, uh, work meeting will take place tomorrow for the um, bathroom and concessions facility at the turf field. The policy subcommittee is meeting on September 14th at 7 a.m., and the superintendent's conference room. That would be the worst committee to be on. You're surprised every time you read that. I mean, I'm getting to, I'm going to sleep around 5.30, and I can't imagine having to get up. You're looking at policy. I get, getting up in an hour to look at policy. We're, we're very excited about it. Excellent. What, SS, what better way to start a Thursday? Yeah. yeah. Mr. Bernard offered to meet when he comes in at 5.45. <laughs> SSBC is September 19th at 5.30, and there'll be a pre-meeting before that, probably at 4 o'clock, to discuss the Correct. punch list with the principals. NORCAM meeting September 28th. And the next finance planning team, I don't... Do you have it written down? I Yeah, we had that as the... Uh, was it the 27th? Final, was it the 27th? Uh, I can tell you right now. No, we wanted to meet one more time oh, yeah. before uh, before town, town meeting. meeting, right? All right, so I have it. For some reason, as I wrote down nine twenty-eight. I think it's next year. I actually don't have yeah, it. It is nine nine twenty-eight at eight, at eight a.m. Oh yeah, right. Nine twenty-eight at eight. Oh, no, eight. It was eight. Can you make eight a.m. Because I have a nine thirty. It's hard. I told John. I told Johnny to have to yeah, make a wake call. Yeah, you did say call. Even at the meetings at eight fifteen, he sleeps until like nine fifteen. <laughs> <laughs> then he wakes up and he jumps. Right uh, up. God. All right, so um, that's it for upcoming meetings. Administrative report, Mr. Bernard? Yeah, so just not, not, a, not a lot to report to you tonight beyond, um, I think I've fo floated these dates by all of you previously, but I did want to call it to your attention that, um, once again, that on, and Maureen, thank you very much for promoting the um, Ellen Adele uh, plaque dedication ceremony to take place on September 21st at 4 p.m. on Main Street here at the Middle High School. Maureen, if you'd be so kind as to start to work on the Dr. Troughton, uh, same similar ceremony on October 17th at Tuesday um, on at 4 o'clock right outside as we um, dedicate the um, this, this space, the Distance Learning Lab, in honor of Dr. Troughton's service as the superintendent of schools. And on uh, September 23rd, a Saturday from 9.30 to 11 a.m., um, I believe Mr. Colleen may have been in touch with you today. Okay, it'll be tomorrow. Then he's going to meet. He want, He knows to meet the, the deadline for Thursday's paper with a, an announcement for um, the hundredth birthday celebration for the Batchelder School again. That's sad. Principal the principal's the whole time. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, as long as I can remember. <laughs> was he principal when uh, we went to Stoneham, or did he take those yes. days off? Oh yeah. Since he was a junior in college. Yeah, he is. <laughs> he's been principal for a long time. Two thousand two, I believe. Wow. Yeah. I believe oh. so. Yeah. He was so, some the whole batch project. Yes, yes. 
So well, the, the bachelor auction's coming up soon too. That's their main fundraiser. Yeah, that's a Friday. I'm going. I'm. I'm. I'm, I'm going to try to bid on the Mr. Bernard. Are you going to bid on that? And that's a, that's a hot bid. commodity. <laughs> what do you, they, they, that's one of the items you can be. You can hang March around with, the, with, Mr. Yeah, with Mr. Bernard. Mr. Bernard. Oh. Yeah. Well, I can have that without bidding. <laughs> Well, I know it's the spirit of it. I know, I know. Last time someone went, that they had four kids. I took them all to lunch. <laughs> what do we expect to raise with them? They had four. They had four children. Oh, you have to pay. Oh, yes. man, I oh, like yeah, that. No, I take, they really raise six or seven dollars. I think really? the committee should. Yeah, I think the committee should get together and make a bid on that. We're family. And John can take the five of us out to lunch. You know, I should ask yeah. what that. I don't know what they got for that though. And we'll bring Michael with us too. I, yeah, yeah. And you'll pay for him too. Yeah, I'm sure. Yeah. All right. That's nice. Oh, you can yes. <laughs> In. Bring everybody. We went to the Mandarin too. It wasn't just like going to oh. Hornet's Nest. Really? Was, nice. No, we went for a nice lunch. Yeah, we went for a nice lunch. Oh. Yeah. Excellent. It was fun. Any correspondence tonight? No correspondence, sir. Our next meeting is September 25th here, 6 30. October 2nd, uh, 6 30. Uh, in the Superintendent's Conference Room, that'll be the pre town meeting. Correct meeting then October 16th at the here and October 30th here when do we start with the um, the school rotation the first one is the high school in December okay so we don't have far to go <laughs> no All right and then I think it's the batch in January okay yeah. anything else anybody I'm sure that's right. entertain a motion to adjourn Motion by Julie, second by Janine. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Good night. All right, Mel.